Hello and welcome back to part three of my learning to knit series. Um, today I'm going to be covering increases and decreases. So in the previous videos you've just learnt how to make um, things that stay a consistent width all the way up, kind of like a scarf or a, a square or a blanket, that sort of thing. So it's really good for making uh, just squares and rectangles. But you're really, really limited if that's all you can make. Um, so if you want to learn how to do increases and decreases, I'm going to be showing you how to do that now. Um, things that be used for is like if you're making a hat, um, you generally make it as either like a tube or one of the circular needles like I talked about in part one, or just make it flat, which is what I usually do. Um, go forwards and backwards. And then when you get to the top of the, the hat, you do decreases and then it makes the, the hat shape. Um, otherwise you just end up with a square hat and you could maybe put a drawstring in it if you wanted to. Um, other places you might do shaping is if you're making a jumper and you wanted to come in on the waist. Um, if you're doing a sleeve and it'd be like tight on the wrist and then you'd want to like increase it so it would come out over the, the arm because the arm gets bigger as you go up, your wrist and bicep aren't the same size um, and then you've got kind of different shaping and things for for the sleeves. Jumpers are quite complicated, I wouldn't suggest starting with them, but uh, you want to do shaping for lots of different projects. So I've got just a little patch I have prepared earlier. So I cast on 12 stitches, so that's how many I've still got. And I did two rows of garter stitch and then the rest of it in stocking stitch. And I went through how to do all of that um, in my second video, so the one that was just um, before this one. Uh, one of the things that comes with stocking stitches is that sometimes it like rolls up um, and it kind of rolls in at the side and it rolls in at the bottom. So top tip if you're doing a piece in stocking stitch, um, a little row of garter stitch at the bottom just creates this little decorative border and stops it rolling up so much. So I've got 12 stitches now. Um, I'm going to show you an increase, a couple of increases and then a couple of decreases because I think that's probably the smarter way around to do it otherwise I'll run out of stitches. So. Um, the first one that I'm going to show is a just cast on more stitches, so how we cast on at the start. Put it in, work the stitch, and pop it back on. So that then gives you, and I'll do two of those so it's a little bit more obvious. So that then gives you a little um, kind of like an L shape. So that just comes out straight jutting out. Um, not necessarily wonderfully attractive uh, but it is helpful for some things um, maybe you can guess what the uh, matching decrease is going to be so I'm just going to work through these stitches just so you can kind of see the effect of it because if I do a whole load of weird other stuff it might, um, might look a bit funny so that's how that looks a little L shape so I'll do the next increase on here just save knitting all the way across and back. Generally you want to do your increases and decreases on the right side and then just so you have like one right side and you do all of the crazy increases and, and everything and then you just purl on the way back and you do all your crazy stuff again. Um, not necessarily always the case but um, happen like your pattern will tell you that that has, how it happens quite a lot. Um, so the next one I'm going to do is a knit front and back. Um, if something just says increase in a generic way and doesn't say anything, this is what I tend to do. So you put the needle in as you normally would, go around and catch the stitch, and then before you slide it off this needle, you take this right hand needle and then you put it into the back of the stitch there. Hopefully that's visible. And you wrap it around and you take it off. So where I had one stitch, I now have two. Um, I think this one's also known as the bar increase because it gives you a little bar there. And I'll do that again. So knit into the front of the stitch normally. Go into the back of the stitch. Knit it. Whoop. Drop it. <laughs> knit it. And take it off. You don't have to drop it, just if you're feeling incompetent. Um, and then, if we do another couple of stitches... The next one I'm going to do is called the M1, and this is uh, a motorway that runs through, <laughs> it is, but uh, this is also known as the make one, and we use this part here um, to just create one extra sort of one in between. So pick that bit up, which is a space between the two stitches, 
and put it on here and as you do that you need to twist it and then when you knit it you knit into the back of it and that just means that you end up with it not unraveling and then you've just made an extra one in the middle so if I knit the next one so then it kind of just integrates in and sort of appears out of nowhere in your little row of these so I'll just do one more just to re-show that so in there pick it up that way and go into the back of it there you go and I'm just going to purl along the back and then you'll be able to see what the effect of all of that is just a normal set of purling um, something to know if you've got uh, if you're a beginner knitter your tension is probably going to be all over the place um, and really inconsistent that's just something that comes with time and practice and if you pay attention a little bit to it at the at the start then um, hopefully it'll just not be too bad and then just get easier and easier um, usually everything comes up really tight if you're doing increases and decreases you are messing about a little bit with the tension um, so the pearl row is actually really helpful for just helping with that um, but if you're if you're knitting it and you do an increase something and it feels weird or tight or anything it doesn't mean you've done it wrong it just means that the yarn's doing different things because you've shoved some extra bits in there um, especially with like the M1 because it's like a little wedge so that is our little set of increases so Taking eyeball to it, you've got the two where we cast on there. We've got some increases in here, which you can I can mostly feel rather than see. So those are the um, knit front and back. You've got that little bar there on that bar increase, but it's still very subtle. Um, and then we've got our M ones, which are here, coming around the end. So that is how you increase. And now we've obviously got way more than twelve stitches on here. So decreases, which are the opposite um, so uh, spoiler alert very easy to tell that the next one's going to be cast off so exactly the same as we did before you knit two stitches you pass one over um, and then you do have many so because I cast on two stitches I'm just going to cast off two stitches and that again gives that very straight across so not great if you're doing kind of nice beautiful curves and shapes but um, it's useful for certain things um, particularly with like uh, the top of sleeves because you're making that shape on a flat piece so you like cast off each edge to then just bring it up rather than trying to make it smooth like if you're making a hat or something um, if you look at a sleeve pattern um for a uh like sewing or anything you'll you'll kind of see what i mean so that's cast on and cast off the next decrease um, and this one probably is my favorite if it doesn't say anything to do anything else is just knit two together it's abbreviated to k2 tog and it is exactly what it says on the tin so you just put your needle through and it can be a little bit tricky put your needle through two stitches instead of one wrap it round knit it as normal um, pretty standard sensible sort of thing that you might think of um, and i think if someone were to intuitively tell you that you need to um, decrease that would that would be the way that you would do it um, and then the other one just give it a little bit of space um, is the slip slip knit weird situation so you slip a stitch slip a stitch oh no it's slip knit <laughs> slip a stitch knit it and then you pass the slip stitch over So slip one, so just put it in, I didn't explain what a slip stitch was, <laughs> you just put it in and you don't work it, so you just slide it from one needle to the other, um, and then you knit one, and then this slip stitch which doesn't have anything like attached to it, so if you look at it on the back it's got like a, the line instead of going to it and the yarn joining up it just skips it, and then you just pass that one over. And then I've just knitted that last one. So that's increased and decreased. Um, it's made some weird little 
bulge here in the middle uh, on my piece because I've increased and decreased, uh, which can be a thing, you can do that on purpose. Um, and I'll just run back with a purl stitch the whole way along. I just started to do the uh, weird backwards knitting that I do. And it looks like I'm going to run out of phone storage soon. So yeah, you've got different decreases which are good for different things and different increases which are also good for different things. As we saw, they were um, made for some different shapes um, and different effects on the front. So, uh, trying to knit before I get the video timer to run out. Um, so yeah, and particularly with the decreases, you can see that they slant in different ways. So where the two stitches have joined um, for the knit two together, they slant that way, and the slip slip knit, they slant that way. So that's those two are the slip slip knit, um, and then those are the K2 tog. I think that's about all of the storage that I have. Um, but increases and decreases can be great for making triangles, like this one that my best friend knitted. Cast on three, increase at each end. Make giant triangle. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs>